Alex Chino, case I press. I'm with Austin Jones, who's coming off a main event win at Fury FC 62. Austin, how are you? Doing well, man. Yeah, just uh, recovering from the fight and just, uh, yeah, enjoying life, uh, taking the week off uh, from training, but I'll get right back to it Monday. But uh, yeah, just uh, sitting here in my office, um, just hanging out. Awesome, dude. Well, I mean, it's been five days since your fight. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. Uh, I think this is the first time uh, I really got to do a little bit of everything, um, some jiu-jitsu, Muay Thai, um, and some wrestling. So I think I did a good job of blending in that fight and just kind of um, being in the moment, being able to fight with my teammates and everything was uh, was one of the best uh, fight days of my life. So, did you, get any, did, did you have any injuries? Uh, no, got out nice and clean, which is which is always good. I uh, got a little shiner, but it's not, not nothing nothing I haven't seen before or felt. So, but I barely even felt it. Like uh, Josh Frem, uh, my teammate, he's the cut man for the for the fight, and he put the the little cold metal thing on my face, and I was like, oh, I didn't even know I got caught with that. But then I saw it after the fight, I was like, I got a little shiner. <laughs> Josh, Josh is the man. Um, yeah. <laughs> do you have any injuries going in, into the fight? Uh, yeah, I actually dealt with a couple things. Uh, I had this um, pinky issue. It's still, it's, it's gotten a lot better. Like, you see this one? Yeah. <laughs> but before, it was like the size of my uh, my middle finger. So, dealt with that. And then um, I ended up spraining my MCL about nine weeks ago. So, like, right, got ready to fight right around that time, though. But it was a, it was a tough challenge, uh, even just training-wise. I was still staying on the mat, still um, doing my thing, but had to really pay attention to my knee. But um, I knew it was going to pay off if I just fight through it and not just sit out the whole time. So, so worked out. And nothing happened to it during the fight. So that's always funny how that works. <laughs> right. <laughs> so anything is going to be something else. Yeah. Yeah. It's so weird. So weird how that happens, man. Um, well, what was the game plan going into this fight? Honestly, uh, the game plan was um, just have fun out there. Um, I know, you know, I, I do it all. You know, I've trained with um, all these high level fighters at our gym and um, it really just came down to me just being in the moment, not um, stressing over the fight. You know, I chose to do this because I was passionate about it and I thought it was fun. And sometimes you make it too much of a job to where you put all this pressure on yourself, especially being the main event, um, fighting in front of my fans. Um, I've done it a few times, but I think this, this time I fully embraced it. Um, sometimes we just, we forget to take it all in, no matter how crazy it is, how much um, crazy stuff's happening for the buildup of the fight. Um, good or bad, you just got to take it all in. And I think that's when you'll bring your best foot forward. So that's been the main focus. And each fight, I'm trying to elevate that. So that's been my goal. Um, how did you feel about, how did you feel about your performance? Uh, I felt great. Um, I knew he's a tough opponent. Um, in fact, you know, it was an opponent switch. So I only had about two weeks to prepare for him. So I knew I I was like, you know what, um, totally different style than the guy I was going to fight. But, um, you know, I've seen it all in the gym and then in, even just in my fights, just having that experience now that I do. Um, you just got to go in there and fight and not overthink it. Um, I felt really good out there. Uh, my cardio was on point and uh, the weight cut went really well, too. So, How much of a different game plan was Armas from Nico? Oh, big time. Like um, with Armas, uh, it was, you know, don't be afraid to strike with him. But um, let's get him to the ground. Let's kind of wear down on him a little bit. But with Nico, it was like we were just going to keep it on the feet, um, kind of pump, you know, throw some jabs at him and kind of draw him out a little bit. Because um, from what I've seen, he was solid on the ground as well. So why, you know, don't don't go to his strength. Um, keep him on the feet. Plus, I was really working on my striking um, since my last fight. So, gotcha, gotcha. How was it fighting in Colorado? And your fucking your the the fight card was filled with with factory oh, yeah. x and it was a it was a good night for uh, factory x mm -hmm. um yeah I, I love you know traveling to fight um but i really love fighting at home obviously because you have all the the resources you need you got um plenty of help and support um but it can also get pretty stressful trying to sell tickets and everything but i was like you know what i each day leading up to this fight i'm just going to handle my business um you know on the mats and off the mats so i was like once i get there i know i've earned it um, you know, on the business side of my career and then um, in the gym. So why not me? Why not make this, you know, the closer of the night? And um, my teammates just went off. Like we just decided, like we went off. I know Markel called me um, and he was like, he's like the night before the fight, he goes, we're, we're going to show out tomorrow. Now I can already tell we, we worked too damn hard for this. So I was like, yeah, you're right. Let's go do it. And then uh, Joseph Garcia 
pretty much set the tone for us. I don't know if you saw that one, but yeah, yeah. now everyone's going crazy about that uh, that knockout. And in fact, uh, I just watched the sparring today, and uh, I saw some of my teammates trying it out. It's like the old school Don Fry grab his head and start punching. So <laughs> uh, I can't stop watching that video. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic, yeah. man. So, um, what do you want the rest of your year to look like? On um, the rest of the year, you know, obviously I'm trying to uh, break it. Break, have a breakthrough year, get to the UFC this year, but not trying to anticipate anything. I'm just going to do my job. Um, I would like to fight for the Fury belt. Um, I think that'd just be a great thing on my resume. Um, you know, I've got an AMI belt, but I want a, a pro regional belt. So that'd be a good goal and just a good challenge. Um, you know, nice five round fight. Um, see, see how it goes. And then, uh, but if I get the short notice call, I'm definitely taking it because I know it's meant to be at that point. Yeah, for sure, man. So it is is the UFC the goal or would you hop into PFL into that million dollar tournament? Like what's, what's kind of, what's kind of your mind being right now? Yeah. I mean, yeah, if the, if the opportunity is right. Yeah, for sure. I think PFL to go win, you know, a million dollars would be great. Um, there's plenty of money over there and then uh, UFC as well. Um, I wouldn't mind fighting for both of them one day, but it just depends on um, where the opportunity lies. But uh, right now, yeah, that's the big goal is the UFC. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, well, I want to end on this, man. So, um, so after your football career, um, when did you know you were going to fight? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Actually, it was uh, during my football career, which is kind of crazy. Um, well, we all know, you know, in um, college and, you know, NFL, it's, it's slim to none chance. Um, you know, I was still striving for that. I did pro day all that good stuff. But um, I also started watching, you know, the UFC about my sophomore year of college. And I was like, you know what, like if, you know, NFL doesn't work out, I want to, I want to go for this. Um, Cause I wrestled in high school a couple of years and I found out wrestlers were doing it. And then I was like, honestly, like learning how to fight would be pretty dope, you know? And um, I had the very first UFC game and I thought I was, you know, learning that way and like tried some basic moves. Uh, in fact, the triangle, <laughs> From the game but um yeah that's uh that's been kind of the motivation and i started watching out in nebraska and i was like well when i move home i want to start training again so gotcha gotcha so you started tr- kind of training while while in football um i just wanted to know like your mentality like you know you go go to nebraska good school um but you didn't get to the nfl um i guess you know and, and you've been playing football your entire life so like what was your mind frame during that time? Oh, it was, it was crazy, man. Cause like, um, I was, I was honestly devastated that I couldn't play football anymore. Cause I had been playing since I was nine years old and, um, went through a lot of ups and downs, just like getting good at that sport just for it to kind of end when I was starting to, you know, just now figure it out, really learn the X's and O's while at Nebraska. But, um, the time I spent there, you know, I was able to really work on my strength and my athletic ability. And I think, uh, I've kind of, it's kind of come full circle in MMA because I almost forgot to actually use those things that'll give me an edge because, you know, there's not that many guys that have played running back that do this. And there goes the footwork right there. There goes the explosiveness. Let's find a way to um, tr- put all that together. And that's what kind of Coach Mark Montoya kind of talked to me about. Is like, you know, go back to being that D1, you know, football player. Um, and it's been paying off. I'm like, you're right. I am a, a great athlete. I got to really believe that and now mix it together with the martial arts. So um, it's kind of a blessing in disguise, but um, I mean, I, it would have been nice to make millions of dollars by now in the NFL, but we'll get there. <laughs> of course, of course, man. Uh, yeah. I've asked a couple former NFL players that are they're fighting or in the fight game. Um, why do you think so many football players transition to, to mixed martial arts? Like, what is it? <laughs> I feel like it's like either two of the extremes, they either go play golf or they, they want to go fight, you know? <laughs> because <laughs> my older brother uh yeah he uh we played in nebraska together and that's all he does is golf and i'm like you could easily knock some guy out but that's just not his his thing but um i think it's a big part of it's like uh you know that contact sport and even just like the the, the team the camaraderie um i'm willing to bet like a lot of these uh nfl players they they join a fight team they're not just training with one coach because they like that camaraderie and they're um, being able to learn the game and study the game, they kind of go hand in hand. There's a lot of things I would say that are similar, even just when you're in the fight. Um, it's not like you're just running a marathon. There's some, there's some stop and go there moments where you give it your all and then you reset 
go to another play. So I think it's very similar in that regard. You're just, you know, whoever goes down first type thing. <laughs> Do you think we're going to see a lot more college football players that don't make it to the NFL coming over to fighting? Maybe. I mean, now that the college players are getting paid, I mean, some of them are making millions now. It's crazy. I'm like, where was this at now? Like, <laughs> but yeah, we'll, I think we'll definitely see a lot of that. Just even as the sport grows, like even just being here at the gym, um, managing the gym, uh, we see a lot of just like youth that really want to get into this. And I'm like, I couldn't even imagine as a kid. I didn't, I didn't want to box when I was young, you know, like, but um, these kids love MMA. Um, and then even, yeah, high school kids and, um athletes stuff like that they want to learn how to at the very least learn this stuff which makes total sense to me it's good to know how to defend yourself and it's a great workout so absolutely if you could pluck one nfl player and put them in mma who would it be oh uh, <laughs> and dominic <Dominican> sue <laughs> <laughs> i think him versus francis would be pretty impressive Ooh. oh man i think i think that i think there's be a deal like uh he's got a, he's got to fight uh francis and then francis has to do the oklahoma drill with him <laughs> that's, oh, that's the fight to see right oh, there. <laughs> bro, i would fucking pay money for that <laughs> yeah I, i've always thought man i mean imagine aaron donald coming over to, to fucking fight bro oh like, yeah <laughs> I mean, there's, a, there's a freak there's a freak scary <laughs> yeah absolutely or even like some of these these like super fast guys too i think would be pretty impressive too yeah like some, it's crazy, like, you know, it's it's mainly running backs, linebackers, and linemen that, that like transition. You don't see a lot of receivers come from the come from football to fighting. Yeah. I think they're just the, the, the you know, they're the finesse players. They fight on like getting hit in the first place. They rarely get hit anyways. Unless you send them across the middle, you know. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Those are those are the golfers. My brother was a receiver, so I know it's not a perfect this. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thank you so much for your time, man. I really appreciate it. Um, mm -hmm. You want to plug your social media? You want to plug your uh, plugging sponsors? You want to thank anybody? The floor is yours. Yeah, yeah. I'd just like to thank uh, uh, Factor X, obviously my team, uh, Coach Mark Montoya. Um, also my sponsors, Where's Weed, um, Sozo Chiropractic, Denver Chiropractic, um, Drip Beverage. Who else? Who else? Um, comments from the Peanut Gallery. Uh, I don't want to leave anyone else out. I uh, think that's it for now, but if not, I'll shout them out on the, on the repost. 